the expectations are high, no matter what. And then McDermott, we can, you know, we know he's a great defensive coach too. So we don't expect that defense to fall off, right? But he's going to yeah. run the defense this year. Though. I know. Yeah. Leslie Frazier was a scapegoat. Yeah. He's the guy that got thrown overboard in a very clumsy and artful way that they made us <laughs> think he's walking away on his own. Right. And as time goes by, it's like it's mm, not really because he's a, looking for another job, kind of right? A, yeah. Yeah, right. Right. So, right. I, I so mean, McDermott's got that on his plate now, too. He's got to call the defense. He's got to run the team. And he's got to constantly worry about what's going to set Stephon Diggs off again. Yeah. I, and I better do well this year with Aaron Rodgers in the division. And here comes DeAndre Hopkins now, maybe, to the Patriots. And the Dolphins are great. Good Lord. Yeah. No, there, there's pressure. There's expectations, definitely. But, that you know, to 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 what you're saying, that that's – Hey, McDermott built that. I think that's what he wants. I mean, you know, again, he he wants to be in this situation where they're a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, do they want to kick the door down like you're saying and win the Super Bowl? Of course, or get there, definitely, right? And so, so yes, and and and, and like I agree with you. The last two days, they're not a good look on McDermott. It's it's not the best for him, and I think that's why you know instead of making this a big thing, they tried to kind of put the toothpaste back in the bottle yesterday, and and you know not make it look like hey there's some some issues here with our organization, but yeah the, those issues and what we saw over the last two days, yeah they're gonna fall back on McDermott and and all our minds and eyes and whatever else, and he's probably gonna wish he didn't say some of those things at the Tuesday press conference. That's why you know some coaches just don't even go down that road with stuff like that sometimes because they don't want to be boxed into a corner to where maybe maybe they say something now things look a little weird and we question them even more right but um, yeah they're gonna feel the pressure up there of course they are right now he's feeling the pressure from where they are Josh Allen is probably feeling the pressure more than anybody you know, it's not only Mahomes, and now it's Burrow, and he's gone to a Super Bowl, and he's got Josh Allen's number. So they're all feeling it. But what I will say to defend them is nobody really gave a shit about the Buffalo Bills until Sean McDermott and the Buffalo and Josh Allen got there. Oh, and that's right. where oh, I always no, say, right. you know, don't abandon ship too quickly and other options out there are not always better. They got a good thing going here. And, you know, hopefully ownership and everybody can can realize that some mistakes happen every now and then. But this year, yeah, it's big is that accelerator on the relationship this year either cements it or or destroys it. And, and look, well, so wait. So I what do you think here again? What do you think here? Let's let's talk about this. Like, do you think if All they right. go to the playoffs that they would actually think about letting like firing Sean McDermott after that if they don't, you know, get to the Super Bowl and in, in the AFC right now? Well, let me start with the possibility they don't make the playoffs at all okay. because I still believe there's a good chance that only one team is getting out of the AFC East when you consider they all play the four teams of the NFC West. They all play the four teams of the NFC East. That's 8 games on a 17 game schedule and they have the round robin home and home in their division. That's six more games. Yeah. I mean, hell, that's 14 out of 17 14 games. 14 tough ones. Against pretty good competition, and you're going to be compared, if you don't win the division, with teams from other divisions that haven't had that same experience. Sure. So it's going to be harder for the second-place team to get in. So if the Dolphins win the division and the Bills don't make the playoffs, Chris, okay, let's just start there. Bills fail to make the playoffs. It's done for McDermott. It's done. It's over. It's kaput, I believe. Now they get to the playoffs. Playoffs. Let's say they 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 lose in the wild card round. I'd say pretty good chance it's time for a change in Buffalo. The real question is if they get to the divisional round again. Three straight years, divisional round. Three straight years, don't get past the divisional round. Then what do you do? Now I remember Steve Mariucci got fired after losing in the divisional round 20 years ago by the 49ers. And John Fox got fired a decade ago, losing in the divisional round, a year after going to the Super Bowl with the Broncos. He got fired by John Elway in Denver. So I think that that's really the spot where let's see how it all falls apart. Let's see how they lose in the divisional round. Let's see how Stephon Diggs seems to be reacting to the loss in the divisional round. Does he come out with a full-throated defense of Sean McDermott? He needs to be back. He's my guy, whatever the case may be. That that's where I think it gets into a very gray area 
for McDermott. That if they get to the divisional round and they lose again. If they get to the conference championship, he's probably fine. Super Bowl, obviously fine. Divisional round and lose, that's where I think we kind of sit back and wait for the white smoke or the black smoke or the blue and red smoke or whatever color smoke it's going to be to come out of the chimney. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I, I nothing would shock me. It, it, it's 2023. The world is as cutthroat as ever. I, I, I You know, I, I'd, I, I'd have a hard time letting them go no matter what. I mean, no matter what. For the results you've gotten from Sean McDermott since, his, since he's gotten there, you know, I know we all want Super Bowls, but they, they're, they're not that easy. They don't grow on trees. And, and I mean, it, he's gotten there, and the, it's playoffs every year. It's, it's other than the first two years, it's like Super Bowl contender. And, yeah, they did make an AFC championship game, certainly, and, and should have beat the Chiefs on, a, on another divisional game, and they kind of messed that situation up. And I'm not trying to make excuses, but, you know, that's where I would just be careful if I was the Buffalo Bills of letting those thoughts creep in. And then to where, like, if they go to the playoffs and let him go, I think that would be crazy. And here's another where I just would give wiggle room to where if they don't go to the playoffs, the AFC, as we've talked about, is it's the best we've ever seen it. The AFC East might be the best we've ever seen it. Like th this could be a year where we see some teams that are like ten and seven or nine and you know ten and seven, and you might not get in the playoffs. It, it could it could be that way. And you know if that was the case, if they were ten and seven and nine and eight and just missed. Uh, I still wouldn't abandon chip on what they've done up there and what they're doing up there. I still think it's one of the better coach teams in football, and it's it's a good culture. This is really the first time in the whole McDermott era that we're talking about any schism or issue with any player or anything on the team, and I think that you know says a lot, too, about what he's doing up there. Okay, so when you repeatedly say that – the Bills expect Josh Allen to do everything, and they don't have enough help around him. And I feel like we've had this conversation not long ago, but it's relevant now. Yeah. Given what you've said about McDermott. You have concerns about how the roster is constructed or how the offense is designed or whatever it is. It's too much on Josh Allen. Yeah. Who is to blame for that? Who would you put the blame on? But, well, I, I think if, you know, again, there, that, that's where you get into the evaluation process of players. And then I don't know who has total power control between McDermott and Brandon Bean, right? I, I don't know there. But yeah, if there was one thing I would look at again, and this is where it's like, this is crazy. I, there's a part of me that I just go, this is crazy. We're talking about this. We're talking about a team that's been like top two or three seed, you know, the last few years, right? But at the same time. But Chris, they could be better. I know. But they could be better. So that's, you know what my that's answer the is. The, the talent on the field is the thing that has been missing. They're just a, a, a player or two, blue chip players like we've talked about. You know, the meat and potatoes and everything are good. But it's like we talked about with when they lost compared to the Bengals and some of the other top teams and, you know, the Chiefs and the Niners and the Eagles. They're missing a few of those big time difference makers that those teams have that they don't. And I think that's where I look at it to go McDermott, hey, front office, whatever. That's where I wish they would improve things just a little up there in Buffalo. See, and, and now look, now look, th this is difficult for people in our job because we interact with these folks. They get sensitive as they should. I have so much respect for these guys. That's jobs. where it's hard. Yeah, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. But our duty is to the audience, yep. as I say time and again. I know. And if I was a Bills fan, I'd want to blow it all up right now. I'd want to get rid of all of them and start over again. While I have Josh Allen, there's something that has been missing whether it's talent or the utilization of the talent, I would want to blow it all up. I'd want to go get Ben Johnson from the Lions or whoever the A-list offensive coach is. I'd regret that we didn't do it when we could have had Sean Payton to coach Josh Allen for the balance of his career. But I would want to make massive changes while we still have Josh Allen and let's get an offensive head coach. Nothing against defensive head coaches. I would want for Josh Allen, a guy who... When we figure out how to properly use him, I don't have to worry about him becoming the head coach of the Giants. I've still got him. He's not leaving. He's going to be joined at the hip with Josh Allen for the balance of his career. And we're going to do everything we have to do to fulfill our obligation to the fans that we've gotten this guy who's one of the best quarterbacks in football. Now we got to get the results. If I was a Bills fan, 
I would be clamoring. And see, this is where there's a conflict, I think, between circling the wagons and defending your own, but also recognizing, man, that asshole Florio is making some good points here. We're not as good as we need to be. We're not achieving what we need to achieve. And this is big boy business here. This is why they get that money because of the possibility that it's all going to be gone if you don't, you know, it's a, it's a zero-sum game. Every good team, there's a bad team. Every winner, there's a loser. And the losers want to get better. And, the t- and sometimes the teams that want to get better aren't losers. Sometimes the organization says, man, we got this generational talent at quarterback and we can't get to where we want to be. I mean, if Marv Levy wasn't getting the Bills to the Super Bowl every year, every year with Jim Kelly and Andre Reid and Thurman Thomas, I'd be saying the same thing. What the hell's going on here? You got this great offensive talent and you can't get to the Super Bowl? They could, four straight years, which is one of the most impressive accomplishments in NFL history to keep going back to the Super Bowl, even though you keep get, getting beat every year there. But, but yeah, you've got, and, and they don't even have anything close to what the Bills of the 90s had, but they have Josh Allen. Where is your Thurman Thomas? You've got your Andre Reed. Where's your Thurman Thomas? Right? That's one of the things. We just, we just kind of numb to it that they don't have. And maybe they do in James Cook. I don't know. Maybe he's going to become that. So, Chris, that's my point. Yes, they've been better than they were in the 20 years between the tail end of the K-Gun offense era and getting Josh Allen. Because it was a long, empty, woeful road for the Bills. But, again, this is the whole just good enough or do you want to be great? Is it enough to be in the playoffs every year? If it is, fine. But if I'm a Bills fan, I'm saying, man, how many more years does Josh have left? Ten? How many years does he have left when he can play like he's currently playing now? Five? We got some work to do to get to where we want to be. And either the guys who we currently have on the payroll are going to get the work done now or we got to be thinking about other people. You know what? It's that yeah. simple. I, I, you know, I, I know, but, but I would say that that's where I just say be careful of that. That's what, that's what I would say. You know, like you said, you know, after Marv Levy, they fell into who the hell are the Buffalo Bills for like 25 years? Oh, they still play football? That's what I just said. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm agreeing with you there. That's where I just, you know, I know we all want Super Bowls and all that. And yeah, you know, hey, listen, that Bills team, that was a special orchestrated team. You know, we could sit there and praise Marv Levy or we, but you know, there's people in football that would tell you, Hey, that was like the most talented team in football and they couldn't win a Super Bowl, Right. So there was issues there. There's just, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's professional football. It's, it's the, the margin of error is like minute. And, and I go to McDermott and go, man, he's been the head coach since 2017, 2018 is the only year they didn't go to the playoffs. And we're talking about. 13 and 3, 11 and 6, 13 and 3, 10 and 6, you know, another 9 and 7 year that got in the playoffs. I, hear it. I, I, got I know. It. I got it. So I that's where I just would. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah. Because we say this from time to time because, look, there's a segment of the Steeler fan base that the minute the Steelers lose two or three games in a row, they want to fire Mike Tomlin. Uh huh. And we've said time and again if Mike Tomlin would ever be fired, there would be teams out there, not just teams currently looking for coaches, yeah. there would be teams that aren't looking for coaches who would fire their coaches if they thought they could get Mike Tomlin. Yeah. If if Sean McDermott were fired the day after the regular season, let's say they don't make it to the playoffs, yeah. and he's fired that yeah. night or the next day. I think he's going to be a, a pretty... For Sean McDermott? I, Beep. Yeah. No, I don't know really? if it's like Mike Tomlin. I don't know if it's like Mike Tomlin, right? But I think right. he's definitely That's my gonna, point. He's, I mean, I, I hear you. I mean, Mike Tomlin won a Super Bowl. He's been to another Super Bowl. You know, McDermott's not quite of that status yet. But I do think McDermott would be like, I, I don't think he'd be on the street long. I don't. You know, for what he's done and what he's orchestrated there. You think there, he gets a head coaching job right away? You think he does that fired in one place and gets hired by one of the places that has a vacancy? I, I mean, would say. It happened for Ron Rivera. I know. I, I you know, you I, I, I would say yes. I would say yes. And if it didn't happen right away, it's like, oh, okay, he's a year out of football, and then he's back in as a head coach the next year. That's what I would say. You know, Again, when we talk about, yeah, I, I think it's from, from top to bottom, there's a lot of good of what McDermott has, has done and, and done for that football team. It's just they haven't won the and, Super Bowl and yet. Look, and, I, and I apologize, Sean. We're focusing on you because you're the one that – that got sent out there with this clumsy, ill-advised message yesterday to act like everything's fine and there was no big deal and what's everybody looking at, you know? Um, The front office is an issue, too. 
And 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 again, I'm not I don't have any animosity toward Brandon Bean. I've interviewed him in the past. I have a feeling I'm not going to be interviewing him anytime soon. But to your point, it's a talent issue around the quarterback. If anyone's to blame between coaching staff and front office, right now the blame would be on the front office for not putting enough around Josh Allen. Period. Full stop. But McDermott has kind of edged into the spotlight now with this whole Diggs thing over the past couple sure, of days. Sure. So so, you know, it I, I like it when the GM and the head coach are are joined at the hip like yep. the coach and the quarterback should be. Right. Because you don't want a scenario where the coach is blaming the GM and the GM is blaming the head coach. But if we're going to apportion blame, I would have said before Tuesday, Wednesday, the bulk of it goes with the front office. But now McDermott is creeping into the spotlight of scrutiny that is going to make this year make or break for him in in many respects, for him and for the front office. It could be just clean sweep when this year's over. Yeah, I, again, I, I hope not. I hope not, you know, for, for what they're doing. But but I, I hear your point, and I know and, – and to your point – this for sure is the most pressurized year for the Buffalo Bills organization. We had expectations other years, but yeah, this is more of like, whoa, the division, the conference, we expect you, you're in a window, is it closing? And now you got a little issue with a player and all that, where I would certainly say the spotlight's going to be on them, you know, more organizationally wise as far as coaches in front office than, than in recent history, that's for sure. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.